So I just want to say some words on the Indian general election because it's not only the biggest election in the world today um, and in Indian history, it's the biggest election ever anywhere in the world by numbers of people involved. Um, we're talking about 970 million um, eligible voters and it was around a 66% turnout, which is a similar sort of figure to Western elections and the general elections. That is, it's quite, quite a high turnout. I think slightly reduced from 2019. But even with that, it's the largest election ever. Uh, to put things in context, India is now the world's most populous country. It surpassed China in 2023. The state of Uttar Pradesh alone is has a bigger population than most countries. So this is a massive um, event. And it's been going on uh, subsequently for weeks. It seems to have come to a close now. Um, Narendra Modi has uh, declared victory, which gives him a right to continue serving as Prime Minister, a historic third term. I believe only a couple of other Indian premiers have uh, had that achievement. However, um, his party, the BJP, does have a reduced majority. Um, his coalition done enough to just get over the threshold, but they do have a reduced majority. So that's, uh, I would say that's got some significance. Um, there's a few things I want to address. Um, obviously, it's a massive election. There's simply not space in this video to go through every single nuance. And I haven't followed it extensively. I've followed it on and off. Um, it has to be said, this is an incredible year all round for elections. Mexico has just elected its first woman leader, in Claudia Sheinbaum. Um, so, uh, and interestingly, her opposition, um, the opposition candidate was also a woman. There's not many events like that. I think Bangladesh also had that situation with two leading female candidates. Um, in India, more women have voted than ever before. Um, so I want to address the issue of democracy because that's really the core thing here. Um, on one hand, it absolutely is democracy in action, and it has to be said that the opposition hasn't contested the results, they've accepted it, so there's no major controversy there. Um, so that is democracy in action, and, you know, we often, in the UK, when politicians are returned, they often thank returning officers and election staff for organising things. Well, you can imagine uh, the responsibility in a country as big as India, with an electorate as big as India, so, you know, it's no small thing to organise an event for that scale. Um, of course, it's absolutely up to Indians who they choose as a government. That goes without saying. Um, however, I have observed some things. Um, I'm not really surprised that Modi has been re-elected. Um, but there's some things around it that I've observed. And I will state my opinion because free speech. Um, you know, I... I respect the right of Indians to choose their government. That doesn't mean I can't have a say on it as someone who's interested in current affairs. And particularly as one of the things I'm concerned about is rising sentiments against my country. So I think um, it's very valid to have an opinion. Um, because India often boasts it's the world's biggest democracy. Well, one thing about democracy is not being afraid of scrutiny and not... Um, acting in a way in which, you know, different points of view are, are, are taboo or not allowed. Um, that's where India should be different from totalitarian states. But I do feel on Modi's watch, India has become increasingly um, intolerant. Um, it would be a stretch to say that Modi is a dictator. He certainly isn't. He's not a de facto dictator. He was elected. Um, but I do think intolerance has increased on his watch intolerance towards India's minorities, an increase in Hindu supremacist thinking. Um, as an example of this, during the campaign, BJP candidates made outright hate speech. In one case, I think it was in Uttar Pradesh, I may be wrong, it may have been another state. Um, the candidate basically made a rant about Muslims being invaders. Now, bear in mind, India has a Muslim minority of 200 million people, and they've been in India for centuries. Indeed, the Mughal dynasty was a Muslim-led dynasty. And yes, there are uh, dark elements of the past. But if India is truly to function as a democracy, then all minorities 
must feel equal and safe. And it isn't just Muslims, Christians and Sikhs have also had legitimate concerns in recent years. Um, so it's one thing to boast about we're the world's biggest democracy, you know, almost a billion people have voted. That's good. It's a very good thing. It's much better than a situation where people don't have a say. So, you know, I don't say anything against that. But Modi's record speaks for itself. Um, I also think there has been what I would call an increase in Western phobia. Now, as an example of this, if you look at nationalistic Indian outlets, and I often quote We On News, that is We Are One World News, um, and it's kind of offshoots, uh, First Post, Gravitas, and so on, uh, a lot of them are fronted by one Palki Sharma. Now, I've spoken about her before. Uh, it's not I'm picking on her. She's not the only one. But she is quite vocal. And even now, you know, she's used this as an opportunity to bash the West uh, because Western indices were saying that India's democracy was backsliding. Now, whether that's true or not, whether it's unfair criticism, the fact is you get nationalists like Palki Sharma who I would argue are much more Modi propagandists than journalists. You know, she, as a journalist, should be taking a neutral stance, or at least um, not turning the whole thing into punditry. But she never, ever misses an opportunity to attack the West. In this case, it's, uh, oh, you know, the West has got it wrong once again about India. Um, but here's the thing. This isn't just legitimate um, contentions about perceived Western bias. I have seen Western reports about India that are neutral, even positive. I saw one, for instance, on the BBC about India's economic rise. Even then, Indian nationalists were flooding the comments, and I, I would say Indian nationalists slash Modi supporters, because he has definitely, um, you know, stoked it up. Um, even then, it was like, oh, the BBC is jealous etc etc this sort of attitude bias western media you know i'm used to hearing that from chinese communists and russian nationalists but india um it's sad to see that i mean i would say india today is obviously a powerful country it's you know definitely growing as a power it still has a lot of weaknesses i mean um there is still a lot of indians in dire poverty um, there are religious tensions that are simmering. Um, there is human rights issues that cast discrimination. That still continues, despite propaganda to the contrary. Um, yet there's been achievements as well. You know, um, I remember the Lunar Programme last year. That was a big achievement. And no doubt Modi will have got some support because he can point to that. Um, but even with that, even with an achievement, which, by the way, a lot was an Indian project that had some... British support uh, from a logistical point of view, not that they would mention that in terms of some of the satellite connections and so on that were used. Um, even then, it was an opportunity to have a go at the West rather than just celebrating it. It was an opportunity to sell the West is jealous. So I do sense a sort of insecurity with Indian nationals where it's this constant need to lash out, to uh, particularly against the West. I mean, yes, there's tensions with China, but that's has been long standing. I will say this. Um, I don't think the West should entirely trust India, quite honestly. I mean, if we look at India's stance on Ukraine, it's uh, on paper neutral. But again, someone like Palki Sharma, who's an ultra nationalist, you know, she's basically advocating Putinist propaganda and saying, well, that's the West point of view. Now let's look at Putin. And she's basically agreeing with him in everything but name. Um, I have no time for Palki Sharma. I think she's the sort of journalist who is more interested in promoting an agenda. And you might argue a lot of journalists do that. But when news starts becoming punditry, and we get it in the West as well, I'm not denying otherwise, I would say you get it on GB News. I would say GB News is a sort of British nationalism, but it's got less influence. The state broadcaster, the BBC, doesn't engage in this. Um, to be fair... NDTV doesn't do it so much, New Delhi television. It's it's not so much that. It's more these kind of newer offshoots like, like I say, We On News, First Post and Gravitas. Um, and I think Palki Sharma is sort of the poster girl of this nationalist intolerance, this nationalist sensitivity. And as a Westerner, I'm a little bit tired of hearing it. I just know that if I go to a We On video, 
and it's about the West, it will be negative. It will be some sort of complaint about something or, um, you know, it, it, frankly, it sounds like RT sometimes, you know, gets into conspiracy theory territory. Um, what's going to happen over the next five years? The good news is the majority has been decreased, so maybe Modi will have less influence. But, you know, as Prime Minister, he didn't say a thing against the hate speech at BJP rallies. Why not? Um, democracy is not just about people voting. That's the central part of it. It's probably the key part of it. But there are other factors. And I believe strongly when you have rising nationalism, then inevitably minorities feel concerned and you have that threatens democracy. And it's not unique to India. I'd say it's happening in America. Um, it's happening in the West. The difference is in the West, nationalism has a taboo. In India, it's openly promoted. Um, so, yes, world's biggest election ever. Um, but I'm not a fan of Narendra Modi. I think that he is a demagogue. Um, I think a lot of his supporters are hypersensitive. And I do see a rising Western phobia in India. I also see a Hindu supremacy. You know, when Muslims are referred to as invaders, whatever the wrongs of the past, the fact of the matter is, there's 200 million Indian Muslims. Um, and they're not invaders. They haven't come yesterday, you know. So I think that sort of language in a country like India is incendiary. So um, it's up to India to show that it's not just about voting. It can respect minorities and not constantly base foreign policy on lashing out at the West. Because I'll tell you something, if India and China have a big border conflict, I hope it doesn't happen, but India will want support. If India wants Western support, then maybe um, it should stop lashing out at the West at every given opportunity. Um, I also will say this, I think we should have good relations with India. I think it should be based on mutual respect. I don't think it should be based on kind of constantly reminding us of colonial of the colonial past or colonial guilt and approaching it as I mean for it for context India is now the fifth biggest economy in the world we're now sixth so our former colonies now surpass us and of course a lot of Indian nationalists gloat about that but it should be about mutual respect it shouldn't be about one side gloating over the other um, and you know the West plays a role as well the West should welcome development in India where it happens we give a lot of foreign aid to India, and in return, um, you know, Indians often work in our NHS, a lot of Indian doctors, so there are mutually beneficial things going on, but um, I do think on Modi's watch there has been a rise, and the thing is, I don't think it could just be blamed on the imperial past, because it wasn't less obvious on Mamahan Singh watch, on his watch, or on previous during previous Indian Prime Ministers, I do think Modi's a demagogue and I think he has allowed this intolerant nationalism to thrive. So it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next five years. If there's any more bloody pogroms, that's hardly something to shout about a vibrant democracy, as in the bloody pogrom that happened in Delhi in 2020. So India has had a lot of achievements. It's a great nation. I'm not anti-Indian. I'm just pro-West. So, you know, I'm going to defend and specifically pro-UK, I'm going to defend my country when you have nationalist so-called journalists like Palki Sharma constantly trying to stir up sentiments against it.